Americans like to think that they own the junk food game. After all, America has given the world spam, pickled pig's feet, and even deep fried butter. But it turns out the rest of the world is just as into abominable food concoctions that sound almost good enough to eat. They're just not as loud and proud about it as America is. Today, we're discussing some of the strangest items found at American fast food chains all over the world. But before we scour the earth for some potential culinary crimes, why not subscribe to the Weird History Food channel? And leave us a comment letting us know what other mind-boggling menu items you'd like to hear about next. Okay, time to sink our teeth into some, uh, tasty treats? Yeah, let's go with tasty. Wait, wait, wait! Don't close out of the video just yet. It may seem like we're coming out of the gate swinging with McDonald's Nutella burger, but allow us to explain. While your first reaction may be a mixture of confusion, revulsion, and, let's face it, joy, we're happy to tell you that beef, onions, pickles, and condiments have nothing to do with this burger. So you can rest assured that McDonald's is not sanctioning a chocolate hazelnut spread on a slab of meat, yet. Instead, the burger is removed completely from the equation and replaced with the smooth, hazelnutty goodness of Nutella. And apparently, it's really tasty. The sandwich, called Sweetie Con Nutella, was released in 2016 and is only available in Italy, where Nutella was born. More of a dessert burger, or desserger, the Sweetie Con Nutella has been gobbled up by many excited Italians since its inception. While it is not the healthiest thing to get from McDonald's, nobody goes to McDonald's for health food. And the snack is about as popular as Nutella, which is to say, people go totally nuts for it. Or should that be, they go hazelnuts for it. Oh yeah, that felt good. While it seems pretty cocky to name your french fries world famous fries, it is hard to argue that McDonald's best selling items are the most famous fried spuds on the planet. But it may surprise you to learn that in Italy, you can opt out of fries altogether and instead request a nice old hunk of Parmesan cheese. That's right, Italy's most sought after side dish to the McDonald's burger is not the french fry, nor the onion ring. It is the Snack Al Parmigiano, a small block of pure Parmigiano Reggiano cheese in a handy pouch. Dubbed the pocket cheese, this tasty and sort of healthy alternative to fries is available upon request for anyone feeling cheesy enough to try it. Oh yeah, that one landed too. Pizza has seen its fair share of toppings over the years. From old standards like extra cheese and pepperoni to more unusual fare like pineapple and jalapeno, we're always looking for something new to toss onto a pizza. But there is a menu item that turns the whole paradigm upside down by leaving the toppings where they are and instead makes its changes from the bottom up. Meet the chizza, a portmanteau of pizza and chicken. That will make sense in a second. Now, pizza and chicken are hardly strangers. I got the new buffalo chicken pizza from Pizza Hut. Both buffalo and barbecue chicken are popular pizza toppings that steadily increase in popularity the more drunk you and your friends are while ordering. But Kentucky Fried Chicken locations in Singapore and Saudi Arabia came up with a new way of wetting chicken to za. Instead of traditional pizza dough, a flattened piece of fried chicken is used as the crust. Then toppings such as marinara and mozzarella are added to create a menu item that would knock the double down out in the first round. Like a seldom talked about cousin of chicken parmesan, the chizza differs by using other common pizza toppings such as pineapple chunks and ham. So more like a cousin who refuses to stop wearing Tommy Bahama shirts. Around here, we call that a hero. We'll stay in Singapore for this next one because, if you can believe it, there is still stranger pizza to be had there. The pizza huts in Singapore carry a reputation for exquisite and fantastical pizzas. But much like a menu item designed by rapper and TV star Exhibit, the pizza we're talking about features a pizza inside a pizza. Pizzeption. The double sensation pizza seems like the kind of innovation only America could dream up. But make no mistake, it's a Singapore exclusive. Here's how the pizza works. Much like Pizza Hut's stuffed crust pizza, the double sensation has a crust jam-packed with assorted cheeses on a typical supreme pizza. However, as you make your way down the slice, you are treated to a second pizza halfway through the first, complete with its own crust full of cheese and sausage. Finally, as you make your way to the center of the pie, you're greeted with a final level of toppings featuring a red-stemmed cherry. Yeah, a cherry. 
Just like the movie Inception, the Double Sensation Pizza does everything it can to prevent you from guessing how it ends. And after putting one away, you're still sitting there like a profusely sweaty Dom Cobb telling yourself you need to go even deeper? Maybe order two and pile them on top of each other. You know what they say, the seaweed is always greener in somebody else's cake. Hmm, maybe we have that wrong. But it is a saying that rings true for anyone who has ever been to a Dunkin' Donuts in China. Walk into any Dunkin' Donuts in Shanghai and you can find donuts with glaze icing or chocolate sauce, or if you're feeling frisky, dried pork and seaweed. Sometimes called the pork floss donut, the confection gives exactly what it promises, crumbles of pork floss and sprinkles of dried seaweed. See, you can use the pork floss to get the seaweed sprinkles out of your teeth. If you think those flavors might clash with the classic taste of the donut, do not fret. The actual donut composition is slightly different from the standard treat. It's made with yeast and with much less sugar. The end result is more of a small, savory breakfast meal than it is a sweet on-the-go snack. No word if there's an accompanying cup of porkweed coffee. Pumpkin spice season comes but once a year for several months. To capitalize on this fall frenzy, Japanese McDonald's locations found a way to incorporate the spice to their menus. Now, chocolate-covered fries are already a staple on Japanese menus year-round, because of course they are, and we demand to know when those are making their way to the States. McDonald's decided to balance the saltiness and the sweet to perfection by adding pumpkin spice to the mix. Dubbed the Halloween Choco Potato Fries, the side dish is served on a tray and drizzled with chocolate and pumpkin sauces. Apparently, the treat is extremely tasty and has garnered many positive reviews. So much so that the Choco Potato Fries have reappeared on Japanese menus every October for the past several years. It's the perfect spooky treat to pair with that terrifying clown who's always hanging around that place. While we're a snacking in Japan, it seems important that we stop by Burger King as well, so we can introduce you to the Kuro Burgers. Kuro literally means black, something that should become obvious the second someone plops this burger noir in front of you. That's because the bun and the cheese of the burger are both jet black, like a sandwich has been moonlighting as a chimney sweep in the 19th century. This tall, dark, and handsome burger is made by charring the burger bun black. Squid ink is then added to further darken the bun until it resembles an imperial probe droid. If that's not enough, the cheese is cooked with bamboo charcoal, so each slice comes out as black as the bun. The remaining ingredients are left their natural color, giving the whole shebang an eye-catching look. These dusky delights were so eye-catching that it started a small feud between Japanese McDonald's and Burger King. Each chain had their own black burger, with McDonald's upping the ante by launching an all-white burger. Taco Bell is not afraid to change up their recipes from time to time, especially with a humble quesadilla. Bells in the Philippines stuff their quesadillas with Cheetos. South Korean Taco Bells throw in a little kimchi. And Taco Bell Finland crams a heaping helping of barbecue pork in with the melted cheese. But UK Taco Bells saw all these wacky mashups and said, hold my sauce. Not to be outdone in the crazy quesadilla game, they invented the Kit Kat Chocodilla, a chocolatey version of the standard quesadilla we've all come to know and love. The treat is made by melting entire Kit Kat bars and chocolate chips between Taco Bell's usual flour tortillas. And that's it. No beef, salsa, nor cheese need apply. The result is a tasty quesadilla-style snack with a satisfying Kit Kat crunch, like a dessertadilla. Taco Bell seems to have conquered the salty versus sweet combination, and fans couldn't be happier. The treat is so successful, in fact, that it has expanded its reach to the U.S. and is currently available in the Midwest, where you can grab the Kit Kat or Twix version. Anybody up for a road trip? When their ice cream machine isn't broken, you can spend a hot summer day enjoying McDonald's ice cream sundaes. Traditionally, these frozen treats come in classic chocolate, buttery caramel, and sweet strawberry. But if those flavors seem a bit tired and mild to you, just hop on a plane and head over to Hong Kong where you can enjoy McDonald's Tabasco Fudge Sunday. Yeah, you heard that right. Tabasco and ice cream, together at last. And on purpose. Tabasco and McDonald's got together for a collaboration a few years back, with the expectation being that McDonald's would combine their time-honored burgers and sandwiches with Tabasco sauce. And the idea worked. Kind of. Instead of the expected Tabasco-filled burgers and Tabasco-garnished fries making the cut, the long-shot Tabasco Sunday wound up stealing the show. Unlike the traditional chocolate sundaes at McDonald's, the Tabasco is not drizzled on top, but rather blended right into the ice cream, 
putting an inescapably fiery spin on the classic dessert, like a prank one would play on your younger brother. The coolness of the ice cream mixed with the spicy sauce quickly became a fan favorite. If you want to send your taste buds on the most confusing ride of their lives, we know a little place in Hong Kong you should try. Back when Windows 7 launched in 2009, Microsoft wanted to promote it with something tangible you could hold in your hands, like a window, or barring that, a big-ass burger. We're talking, of course, about the short-lived Windows 7 Whopper from Burger King, a sandwich so comically large you needed considerable meat hooks of your own just to handle it. It wasn't that much different from the classic Whopper, with seven crucial differences. Instead of one patty, this Sammy had seven. In essence, it was just a gigantic hamburger. Outside of the number seven, it had absolutely nothing to do with Windows 7, except for the fact that both products were extremely difficult to eat. Honestly, it would probably be easier to eat a copy of Windows 7 than to hork down this monstrosity. As part of a tie-in with Burger King, Microsoft introduced the structurally unsound meat snack to its customers in Japan. The reviews poured in, and most were pretty lukewarm. The taste was not great, and the meal was an expensive $15. But much of the attention focused on just how much meat you were forcing on yourself with each bite. We're sweating just looking at that thing. On top of that, there were only enough veggies to cover the topmost patty, and there was absolutely no cheese, which I believe is against the law. The dripping grease from all that meat overwhelmed any other flavors and soaked the whole thing into a mushy heap. This turned the Windows 7 burger from a flashy, overpriced but appealing gimmick into a convoluted mess with a tendency to self-implode. Well, kind of like Windows 7. Now the promotion makes sense. The promotion only lasted for one week, but we're still holding out hope that Burger King will release an update to upgrade it to the Whopper 10 or Whopper 11. So what do you think? Which one of these menu items would you try? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, check out some of these other weird history food videos.